Middle ear infections in children occur often and they can cause hearing loss. My guest today is Dr. Jacques Herzog, an ear surgeon and hearing specialist from St. Luke's Hospital in Chesterville. Nice to see you, Dr. Herzog. Good afternoon. How common are these middle ear infections in kids? Well, by the age of 10, as many as 80% of children will have experienced at least one ear infection. Now, most of these occur under the age of four. And at any given time, in fact, as many as 5% of children under the age of four will experience hearing loss as a result of persistent fluid behind the eardrum for three months or longer. Wow. So what causes it? Well, in this group, it's usually due to a poorly functioning eustachian tube. This is a structure that goes from the middle ear to the back of the throat that normally would allow us to pop our ear uh, when we're on an airplane or go up, going up an elevator. Now, when the children are born, that tube may not be functioning well, but as the head grows, the structure then becomes more functional. But in some children, that, that, that uh, normal function uh, is delayed over time, and that's the group we're talking about here. I see you brought a model along. Can you sort of show us with this? Yes, I have. This is a cross-section of the ear. So this is the ear canal. This is the eardrum. The middle ear with the little bones of hearing, the hammer, the amyl, the stirrup. This is the inner ear with the he inner hearing organ, the balance organ. And this is the eustachian tube travels from the uh, middle ear to the back of the throat. When this doesn't function properly, negative pressure will occur in the middle ear, resulting in fluid ac accumulation, and that's how we get our infections. So what are the symptoms that might prompt parents to call a hearing specialist? Well, when their children have problems with hearing loss or speech delay, which may in fact occur as a result of the fact they're not able, not able to hear the words properly and thus not be able to express them, is when they really should get a hold of their ear specialist. And when the fluid persists, we may actually put tubes in the eardrum. Now, what if the treatment's delayed? If treatment is delayed or ignored, we can see complications occur, such as perforation of the eardrum or destruction of the little bones of hearing. Are there any other treatments besides those tubes in the eardrums that you mentioned? Well, what we typically will do is, is, a, is if the per infection is there, we may just have a little watchful waiting or antibiotics, but if that doesn't work and fluid persists, we may need to place tubes. But our concern is if treatment is deferred or delayed, we can see more complicated problems occur that may require more extensive treatment. That's some great information, Dr. Herzog. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. You're welcome.